Hi there, I'm Jeremy Krug, and we are moving on to AP Chemistry Unit 3, Section 11, which is about the nature of light. Now, you may have seen this graphic or something similar to it before. This is essentially the visible light spectrum in terms of the wavelength in nanometers. And so if you see green light, just as an example, what you're seeing is light that has a wavelength of somewhere around 525 nanometers. When you're seeing uh, yellow light, then you're seeing uh, what you're seeing is visible light at a wavelength of uh, somewhere around whatever that is, around 580 nanometers, somewhere in that area. If you see uh, violet or purple light, it has about 400 nanometers as its wavelength. Every color of light corresponds to a specific wavelength, and we can actually measure that using instruments. Now, whenever we see light, the fact is this is just a very small part of the electromagnetic spectrum. In fact, if we look at this, and of course this is a basically a logarithmic scale here, so it's not to a an actual uh, linear scale, but if you see visible light in here, you see that really this is just a sliver of the entire electromagnetic spectrum. And so if you go beyond, if your eyes could somehow see beyond red, or at uh, wavelengths that are uh, longer than red, I suppose you could say, you'd be seeing infrared. Now, most of us can't see that with our eyes. It, it goes, uh, that is something that our human eyes cannot see. Uh, if you were to go even longer waves, you'd have microwaves. And you've probably heard of microwave ovens. Well, microwave ovens use these microwaves in order to cook food, essentially. Keep on going, you have radio waves and, and TV waves. Now, if you go to, uh, to light that has a wavelength shorter than violet, then you have ultraviolet. So somehow, if you could see the wavelengths that are shorter than violet, that's ultraviolet. And keep, keep on going smaller. You have x-rays that have an even smaller wavelength. And, and gamma rays are even beyond that. And so these are probably uh, types of light or types of electromagnetic radiation that you've probably heard of at some point or another. You need to know that ultraviolet x-rays and gamma, those have uh, much more energy than visible light. Infrared microwave and radio waves generally have less energy in their waves than visible light. Now, when we think about the nature of light, we think of a couple of scientists. You've probably heard of, of Albert Einstein, and he's one of those as well. Max Planck is another one that we need to be thinking about when we discuss light. He was a German physicist who studied electromagnetic re, uh, radiation and the nature of light. Now, Planck's postulate basically says that any type of electromagnetic energy, such as visible light or any of those other types of electromagnetic radiation, are only emitted in quantized form. Now, what does that mean? Well, quantum or quantized form refers to the fact that it can only exist in little uh, nuggets or chunks or packets. And we have learned over the last century or so that this is actually how it works. Energy and light exist in these uh, packets. And anytime you see a ray of light, or electromagnetic radiation is being given off, it's being given off in multiples of these little nuggets or chunks or packets. We call these photons. And so what you're seeing is a bunch of photons if you see light or a, a ray of light with your eyes. Now, this is, um, this is to be contrasted with something that is continuous. Just as an example of this, if you've ever walked down a ramp, you know that a ramp is continuous. You can literally stop at any position on the ramp, and that's perfectly fine. On the other hand, a quantum scale would be something like a staircase. You know that if you're climbing a staircase or going down a staircase, you know that you can only stop on a step, on one step above it, one step below it, on any step, but you have to stop on a step. It is impossible to, shall we say, levitate between the steps. And that's what quantum is. In light, we have quantum packets here. You have nuggets or chunks of light. And that's how, that is the, the nature of light. Now, 
We need to realize also that different types of radiation have different effects on atoms and molecules. For example, if you have ultraviolet light or even visible light, that causes electrons to jump or transition to different energy levels. And so you may have a, what is it actually called a quantum leap when this happens. You have an electron and it's energized by visible light or ultraviolet light. It literally causes electrons to jump to different energy levels. It causes them to transition. Now, if you have something that has less energy, like infrared radiation, well, it's not going to cause those those electrons or those molecules have to do quite as much. It will cause those molecules to vibrate. And so infrared radiation causes vibration. Now, once you get to even lower energy, like microwave radiation, that can't even cause molecules to vibrate. It only causes them to literally rotate. And so that's all that's happening. Your molecules are rotating in microwave radiation. Now, maybe you're wondering, well, if this is the case, why do we use microwaves to cook food? Well, that's because the uh, energy in the microwave oven that's being emitted has the same uh, energy as the wavelength that causes water molecules to rotate. And that's just enough energy to cause friction, and that causes the the uh, the water and inside the food to heat up. And so here we have these different types of radiation. You do need to know the effect that each of those types of radiation has is on molecules and atoms. Hope you join me next time as we go on to Unit 3, Section 12, which is about wavelengths and how we calculate that. If you learned something from my video, please uh, shoot me a thumbs up. And I hope to see you next time as we move forward in AP Chemistry.